We're at the Freedom Show today, and this is the Boston Common. The Boston Common was established in 1634. The Puritans that founded the Boston Common paid 30 pounds or $7,869 US dollars today. The Common has served as a central gathering place for many years. In 1775, over 1,000 redcoats camped on the Boston Common during the British occupation of Boston. The Common has held many famous speeches, one of them were Charles Lindenberg, which supported commercial avitation. Many anti-Vietnam War rallies took place at the Common. Martin Luther King held a civil rights rally at the Common too. Next up is the Massachusetts State House. The Massachusetts State House was built in 1798 and is located at the western edge of the Common. The State House has a very interesting design and architecture. It has a big golden dome that is designed by Charles Bullfitch that is visible from the top of Beacon Hill. Many historical events have taken place at the State House, including the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the 1850 Fugitive Slave Law debate, and most importantly, women petition for greater civil rights and also the right to vote. Our next stop is Park Street Church. The Park Street Church building was designed by Peter Banner in 1809 and was the tallest building in America for 36 years. The church had a big role as a center of early abolitionist activities because the church congregation was one of the first congregations to speak about anti-slavery on a national level. The, church, the church's significance in promoting social change was that they were one of them, or they they were one of the ones to promote it. Many people spoke at Park Street Church, like Edward Preacher and William Lloyd Garrison. Both Edward Preacher and William Lloyd Garrison spoke about anti-slavery. Our next stop on the Freedom Trail is Granary Burying Grounds. Many notable figures are buried here at Granary Burying Grounds, like Samuel Adams, John Hancock, Parvier, and Christopher Sattox. They are all very important part of American history. John Hancock signed the Declaration of Independence. Parvier was a supporter in the American Revolution and fortified Boston against a possible British invasion. Samuel Adams signed the Declaration of Independence and helped organize the Sons of Liberty and was governor of Massachusetts for a long time. Christopher Tux was the first person to kill because of religious belief in the American liberty and used his memory to support and support an end to slavery in America and get equal rights for African Americans. Our next stop will be King's Chapel. The significance of King's Chapel is the first Anglican church in important because all the churches were Puritan. It was the only Anglican church in the New York. King's Chapel's role during the Revolution was that it helped create a Unitarian Christian faith. The historical importance of joining the burying ground was having a place to bury loved ones was an important priority. Many important people were buried here like Mary Clinton, Mary Clinton, Mary Clinton, and John Withrop. John Withrop was the first governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony and was a Puritan founder of New England. And Mary Clinton was the first woman in Columbia. The significance of the headstones at the burying ground is pretty interesting. The gravestone that inspired Nathaniel Hathrow to write the Scarlet Letter is in the burying ground. Our next stop will be Benjamin Franklin statue in the Boston Latin School. There's a reason that Benjamin Franklin has a statue and this great school that he went to. Benjamin Franklin made the New England Controversy and the second newspaper in America. The first one was the Boston Newsletter. Benjamin Franklin made the terms battery, positive charge, negative charge, and created new ways to generate to generate charge, and created a new ways to generate, store, and deploy electricity. Boston Latin School is the oldest public school in America. The Boston Latin School has a very historical alumni including Cotton Mather, which was a minister at Old North Church, Benjamin Franklin, obviously, which was a minister and signer of the Declaration of Independence, Samuel Adams, which was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, and a governor of Massachusetts. We're at our next stop, the Old South Meeting House. This place is pretty cool. The Old South Meeting House has been an important meeting house for three centuries. The main hall has held political organizers, ministers and civic leader meetings. Before the Boston Tea Party, lots gathered at the Old South Meeting House to debate controversial tea tax. Toward the end of the debate, Samuel Adams gives the signal to start the Boston Tea Party. Everyone wanted to have freedom of speech in the Revolution era because everyone wanted to have their own opinion and some colonies made it treason to support the British. 
Our next stop is the Old State House. See you there. This is the Old State House. The Old State House is a very interesting architecture. It is a big red, red brick building. It's very symmetrical and its primary feature is a tall, multi-part steeple with, a, with glass windows. The Old State House has a high Dijurian style, meaning it was designed by a highly trained British architect, not an American. The Old State House was the site of a Puritan stockade. The Boston's first trading floor and fun a fun fact is that the Declaration of Independence was first read off the balcony of the Old State House. The Boston Massacre happened at the Old State House. This is the site of the Boston Massacre. The massacre made colonists want to more worried about the British rule and unfair taxation, so that roused them to fight for independence. Like I said, the Boston Massacre is right outside of the State House. Christopher's, Christopher's Atux, who was in the Boston Massacre, was at the front of the mob that went to confront the British soldiers. We're about to be at the Fanuli Hall, and we're about to, about to show you what this place be. This is the Faneuil Hall. Faneuil Hall has been a meeting hall slash marketplace for 270 years, and it's still a stage of debate and a marketplace. James Otis, Dr. Joseph Warren, and other Sons of Liberty would speak at Faneuil Hall, making it known as the Crandall of Liberty. Peter Faneuil is the person that Faneuil Hall is named after. Samuel Adams, James Otis, and Dr. Joseph Warren were famous people who spoke at Faneuil Hall. The legend of the weather vane looks like a grasshopper is that the grasshopper was used in the war of 1812 to spot spies we're at a very historical building you'll never guess what it is the paul revere house pretty cool paul revere was born on january 1st 1735 and died on may 10th 1818. he was known as the hero of the american revolution because of his famous horse ride through the night to warn boston Dr. Joseph Warren told Revere to tell Lexington, Massachusetts that British soldiers were stationed in Boston and about to go into the countryside northwest of the town. Next up, we will be going to the Old North Church. See you there. We are currently walking into Old North Church. Sadly, we couldn't video in Old North Church, but um, we're in the courtyard right now. So I'll tell you about it. The lantern signal that signaled the start of Paul Revere's ride was very interesting. Paul Revere told other patriots to light two lanterns and put the put them in the Old North Church. The light for for patriot leaders across the Charles River in Charlestown and showed the route that the British were going to take. The church's role in the Revolutionary War is very important. If we didn't have Old North Church. We wouldn't have done his. Paul Revere wouldn't have done his famous ride. Robert Newman and John Pulling were were very important to the church because they were the ones who put the lanterns at the top of the church to help Paul Revere with his famous ride. The purpose of the pews in the church was to keep out cold. The old North crypts, the old North crypts, are where 1,000 individuals are buried, and when it was opened in seven to when it was opened in 1732 to when it ended in 1860. Um, we're down here at Cops Hill Burying Ground. You can see it's raining, we got ponchos on, but it's a very interesting burying ground, let me tell you about it. Man, this place is so cool. Many notable figures are buried here at Cops Hill Burying Ground. Emmett Harrett was one of them, and he was one of the ones that built the USS Constitution. Another one is Robert Newman, who placed the lanterns at Old North Church before Paul Revere's famous ride. Another notable figure buried here at Cops Hill Burying Ground is Prince Hall. He was an anti-slavery activist and was a soldier of the Revolutionary War and founded the Black Masonic Order, Mas Masonic Order. It is very important to preserve historical burying grounds like Cops Hill because it is it's important to recognize all the important people in, the America, in American history. If we didn't do these, if we didn't conserve these burial grounds we wouldn't remember them i will see y'all at the next stop and it is the battle of bunker hill it's gonna be a good one we are at the battle of bunker hill monument right now the battle of bunker hill was a very bloody fight and took place throughout a hilly landscape of fenced pastures that were across the charles river 
Although the American Patriots were beaten during the Battle of Bunker Hill, it proved that they can hold their own against a better British army, which helped them in the early stages of the Revolutionary War. The Bunker Hill bon Monument took 18 years to complete, showing how important and valued it is today. Hey guys, um, this is the last of the vlog. We're at, um, we're at the USS Constitution, but I just wanted to show y'all something. Pretty cool dirt bike right there. Just wanted y'all to see that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But USS Constitution is pretty cool. I'm gonna tell you about it. This is the USS Constitution. The USS Constitution the got the nickname Old Ironside because it seemed like the enemy cannonballs could not go through the ship's hull. The Constitution, the Constitution was in many wars, including the Revolutionary France. War, the War of 1812, the American Civil War, World War One and Two, and the Korean War. But not only was the war ship the ship great, the people also made it great. Many great people have fought it on the ship, like Lewis Joseph Bolivar, John Glenn, and Nathaniel Harden.